we have multiple big flare players on the Earth-facing disk, and a solar storm is on its way to Earth. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely holding our attention. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, you can see bright regions in the north and bright regions in the south. Those two bands right there are telltale signs that solar cycle 25 has really taken hold. I mean, look at the sun. It looks like it's lit up like a Christmas tree. And on the far side, we're seeing a lot of activity as well. So this is good news for people who are looking for solar cycle 25 to really take off. In fact, the solar flux has now jumped up into the triple digits once again, and it may actually stay there or stay close to there this time around and be like that for quite some time. Now, as we take a look at region 2871, this is really good news as it begins to rotate off of the west limb. Wham! Right there on the 28th, it fires off a solar storm. Now, it looks like the solar storm's going west of Earth, but coronagraph views show us that this thing is actually Earth-directed, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Meanwhile, we also have region 2880. This is the new big flare player on the Earth-facing disk. As a matter of fact, we even have a 5% chance of an X-class flare from this region right now. It's been growing explosively over the past couple days, and if it continues to grow like this, I guarantee you we'll see some big flares from this one. So we're all keeping our eyes on. Meanwhile, we also have a few other regions, including region 2877. That region also is an M-flare player, so we're keeping our eyes on that as well, and we could see a lot more activity in the days to come. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, you can see that about the last time we had some big solar flares was back on the 23rd. This was from region 2871 as it fired off a couple M-class flares along with a solar storm that really ended up being a fizzle at Earth, sadly. It kind of didn't really hit Earth. It missed Earth to the south. Meanwhile, though, we actually been popping some C-class flares as time has gone on, but if you've noticed right around the 29th, do you start noticing that X-ray flux ramping up? Well, by proxy, that's also meaning the solar flux is ramping up. This is from the explosive growth of region 2880, and it does look like we do have a new M-flare player on the disk, and we are back in triple digits for uh, solar flux, so that means we're back into the good range for radio propagation, and these conditions are likely going to continue over this week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, over the past week, we've actually been hitting kind of anywhere between quiet conditions and actually active conditions. The last time we had active conditions was right around the 22nd and 23rd. This was from a minor solar storm that kind of grazed by Earth. We settled down after that and then it picked up once again right around the 27th. And this was from that solar storm fizzle that we actually thought was going to be a decent storm. Sadly, between that and the fast solar wind, it just didn't do all that much. So we only got some really good shows at high latitudes for for Aurora, but at mid-latitudes we really didn't get much. Meanwhile, that thing has finally settled back down again, and now we are waiting because we do believe we have yet another solar storm that is Earth-directed, and this one should pack a bit of a bigger punch. And although we've only had a few moments of solar storm conditions over the past few weeks, we nevertheless have had some gorgeous aurora shots, especially at high latitudes. And I wanted to share some of them with you. I can't share them all today, so I'll share some this week and then some next week. But let's start with some gorgeous aurora in Norway, including a wonderful capture that got the ULA's Atlas V launch back on the 27th. So some gorgeous fireworks along with that. And Aurora was seen in Russia, and it was seen down in Scotland. And as we begin to go over the pond, it was seen in Iceland. And as we go to the Western Hemisphere, we got our first shot from Quebec in probably three or four years at least. It's a nice capture. And Aurora has also returned to Manitoba, Canada. And we had some gorgeous shots in Saskatchewan. And of course, Aurora was seen in Alberta. And as we go down under, Aurora was also seen in New Zealand. 
Now, taking a closer look at that solar storm that is Earth-directed, we want to focus in on our solar storm prediction models, but believe it or not, we now have multiple agencies that are running these models, so we're going to see how well they uh, compare to one another. Now, let's start off. We'll take a look at the Space Weather Prediction Center. This is their version of Enlil. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Now, as you see the solar storms being launched, you see one being launched to the west of Earth and the other one being launched pretty much towards Earth, that's the one that we care about. And that one actually ends up impacting Earth as a direct hit, and it looks like it'll hit us late on the 30th. And that is the Space Weather Prediction Models or Center's take on this. Now, if we switch to the MOSWALK, this is the Met Office in the UK, their version of Enlil is slightly different, but when they launch that solar storm, you can see it looks like it's gonna go off to the west. But the impact of this one, they're saying is gonna happen a bit earlier like midday on the 30th. Now, if we switch to the NASA version of the model, this time it looks a little bit different still because now we're only looking at the density version of that plot, and you can see that solar storm once again being launched off to the west, but in this case, it looks like the impact will be late, much later than either the MOSWALK or the Space Weather Prediction Center, and could hit us about, you know, maybe early to midday on the 1st. So that gives us a little bit of play, and likely, I think that from the coronagraph images, it does look like the Space Weather Prediction Center's got the right read on it. It's probably going to be much more of a direct hit, but I'll say it could easily linger until the 1st before we actually see some action. So Aurora Photographer pretty much any time from about the midday on the 30th to even late on the 1st, we could see this uh, solar storm hitting. And yes, there's a very good chance that we'll have aurora and it'll drop down to mid-latitudes. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun, well, just a little bit from the side. And when we take a look at Stereo A's view, you can see region 2871 as it begins to rotate off of the sun's west limb from Stereo's view, and it fires off that big solar storm. That's that Earth-directed solar storm we were just talking about. But, and you can also see region 2880, that region has been growing quite rapidly. But believe it or not, even past that, if you look even to the east of, of uh, region 2880, you can see there's a lot of other active regions that are still rotating in into Stereo's view. This is a very busy sun, and it means that solar flux is likely going to stay in the triple digits easily over this week and possibly into next week. So amateur radio operators, believe it or not, you're going to be in the good range for radio propagation on Earth's day side for quite some time to come. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 6th. So you night sky watchers, now's a great time to catch some things like, I don't know, maybe some aurora and those dim objects in the sky. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that Earth-directed solar storm. Now, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions, but we do have up to about a 70% chance of a major storm, and this could last easily for, through the first few days of October before things begin to settle down. Now, at mid-latitudes, we're also expecting active to possibly minor storm conditions. As a matter of fact, we have about a 30% chance of a minor storm, and this could could last until about October 2nd before things settle down there. So Aurora photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged, even for uh, you photographers at mid-latitudes, because we could get a little bit of a show. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, believe it or not, we actually have a moderate risk of big flares this week. This is due to regions 2877 and region 2880. They are the big flare players. As a matter of fact, we've got about a 25% chance of an M-class flare over the next couple days, and we have about a 5% chance of an X-class flare, and this is from region 2880 with that explosive growth, and we're gonna be watching it very closely to see what it does over the course of this week. But what this means is that we do have the risk for radio blackouts, so you GPS users, stay vigilant, especially near dawn and dusk, because if we happen to get some radio bursts during that period and a radio blackout, that could spell trouble for you when it comes to GPS reception uh, in and around those periods. Now, also, because we have all this activity, the solar flux, look at that, we're back up into the triple digits. When was the last time we could say that with 
confidence, huh? And it looks like that is just going to continue to climb at this point. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders who work with amateur radio operators rejoice because we finally get to get back into the green when it comes to radio propagation on Earth's day side. Of course, we have to put up with some radio blackout risks right now, but oh, we'll take it, right? So enjoy this uh, this new triple digits and uh, and great propagation here over this next week because it's likely going to continue even into the next week. So the space weather this week is very exciting. We have an Earth-directed solar storm that looks like it could hit us anywhere starting around midday on the 30th, possibly in through the 1st. So war photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged. We could be getting shows even down into mid-latitudes. Now also, we have some new M-flare players on the Earth-facing disk, especially region 2880 with its explosive growth. We actually have about a 25% chance of M-class flares and a 5% chance of X-class flares. So amateur radio operators, well, you could be seeing some, uh, you know, radio blackouts on Earth's day side, but hey, you'll take it because solar flux is now boosted into the triple digits, and we have good radio propagation on Earth's day side, and that's going to last easily over this week and possibly into the next week. The only issue you have to worry about is when that solar storm hits, radio propagation on Earth's night side could be a little dicey, but hey, you get auroral propagation, so, you know, that's not all too bad news, right? And now GPS users, well, you know, with this big flare risk and that solar flux boosting up a little bit higher, that makes a little bit tough for you. Uh, near dawn and dusk, you're going to be need to be vigilant because you do have the risk for radio blackouts, and that could cause GPS reception issues for you, at least in terms of decent geolocation. And then also near low latitudes, you also may be noticing some issues in and around dawn and dusk as well. So just be aware of that. And then, of course, stay away from Aurora when the solar storm hits because that doesn't help GPS reception either. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.